Today we're going to be looking at the NAND gate and we're going to be also testing its uh, operation under different uh, values of the input and seeing if the output uh, uh, will, will show as according to the tables. The first thing that I want you to remember is that when you remember gates, try to remember not because 0, 0 leads to 1, 0, 1 leads to 1, or 1, 1 leads to 0. Think of the most likely situation that will require the presence of an end gate. For example, it depends. So there will be situations where you just know you need an end gate and then you see what, how it operates inside a, a given circuit. But in this case, remember that an end gate is the gate that will have an output of 1 for all conditions of the inputs except for one particular one which is 1-1 one, one. and that's the only condition that would lead to a zero output in this case think of an alarm system where one of the inputs happened to be the enabling of the alarm system that would lead to a high when enabled that means when the alarm is set and then another input which relates to a sensor connected to an, uh, a window or a door when open that will lead to a high. So imagine when the alarm is on and the window or a door is open, you want the alarm to sound off. So in this case, knowing that when both are either on and, uh, and the window open, then I know that's the only condition that would lead to a zero output. And a zero output, hopefully I would use that information to enable the sounding off of a siren. So it's obvious that it's not just logic, it may require also the proper hardware to make the uh, status of a given output lead to a given, uh, given, uh, given operation taking place. But in this case, that's how I want you to remember the gates, not just the NAND gate, but the OR gate, the end gate, and other types of gates. So today, as I said, we're going to be looking at the 7400, and we're going to test the way it operates and it works by looking at what the output status would be given different conditions of the input. So the first thing you do is you see that this 7400 which is an NAND gate IC of the TTL type which means the operation works under 5 volts right for a very very narrow range and you need to power up this IC to be able to make it work in a circuit. That's the first thing you have to remember. So we need to apply power to it before we can use the gates at all. Second, when you read the markings, when you read the markings, right, not upside down, but read them directly, then remember that the bottom left pin is number one. Of course, you can also use this indentation as if it is to the most left. Then what happens is that pin number one is the left pin bottom left bottom pin. Also you, you notice that there are two rows of pins and this is what represents what we call a dual inline packaging, DIP. Dual inline packaging, that means inline, that means rows, and dual there are two of them. And so in this case when you go counterclockwise you have pin number one, two, all the way to seven, then you go here eight, nine, ten, all the way to fourteen. So as far as this IC is concerned, assuming that you have noted that the pins are straight, not crooked, then you put them across this gutter or channel because you will see that they fit perfectly and assuming that all the pins are in the holes, then you press gently until the IC is well sitting on the proto board. Then the second thing I have to remember is to power up the IC. So as you see here, pin number 14 is connected to 5 volts. Remember this is under 5 volt uh, work. And the pin number 7 is connected to ground. So now we are ready to, a to be able to use the NAND gates. As you see the 7400 has four NAND gates inside. 
every NAND gate has two inputs and one output. Of course, this 7400 happens to be a special one because it has four, two input NAND gates. Two input per NAND gate. So pin number one and pin number two happen to be the inputs and pin number three happen to be the output for the first NAND gate. And as you see here, pin number four and five, the inputs of the second, and pin number six would be its output. So now I would like to operate and verify the proper working of this NAND gate. And the way to do it is, of course, to change the status of the inputs to different conditions and see that the output responds properly. So right now I'm going to connect the first two, uh, the two inputs of the first gate, pin number one and two, both of them to ground. We know that the output should be high. As I said before, the way to remember the NAND gate is that when both inputs are high, that's the only time, the only condition for which the output is going to be low. To verify the status, we don't use a, a digital multimeter, we use a logic probe. And a logic probe, when set to TTL, you set this switch to TTL, and when powered up, you see this wire, I connect it to power, I connect it to ground, red to power, black to ground, and so by connecting this end pin to the pin number three of the IC, what I will see here, when powered up, so I power up my protoboard, and then I check. And you see here that if, if the input, if the two inputs are low, the output is high, which is shown through a red LED that turns, that turns on. Because the red LED means high, the green LED means low. And so for this condition, and if I went to verify, if I went to verify, here it's uh, very difficult to uh, keep it stable, but uh, just do it gently, and you see that the high would show up. I, I know that if I went through 1001, that means if one input is connected to a high, and the other input stays low, for example, I know it's going to give me exactly, again, a high. Now, if I connect both of them to high for the NAND gate, assuming that it's working properly, then this is the only condition when two inputs are high, 5 volts each, then this is the only condition that leads to a green light on, which means a low. And this concludes our first test of the NAND gate and we'll see you in more experiments, in further experiments at other times. Thank you.